Uh, praise be the God and Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm dependent on the mercy and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to speak clearly, to speak accurately, and to represent the Muslim perspective to the best of my ability without distorting it. Now, the subject tonight is the Islamic dilemma. Let me define uh, what I mean by Islamic dilemma. The Quran makes certain statements concerning the followers of Christ and makes uh, certain statements concerning the scriptures of the Jews and Christians that, if true, proves that the author of the Quran believed that New Testament Christianity is the truth from God. But at the same time, the Quran contains statements that contradict the teachings of the New Testament and what the first followers of Christ proclaimed. So I'm going to discuss that and present my case, and if there are Muslims here, I prefer that the Muslims have first dibs at asking me questions, and again, I don't want to put any limits on our Muslim guests because I want them to ask for their heart, and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. Now before I get into the subject, I need to define what Muslims believe for the Christians here who may not have an understanding of what Islam teaches concerning the prophets of the Bible. <clears throat> and my brother here, if you don't mind, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, will be reading passages from the Quran and the Bible. Muslims are taught that the religion of all the prophets beginning with Adam is the religion of Islam. And Islam basically means submission. In a theological context, it means to submit to the will of the one God, Allah. Muslims are further taught on the basis of the Quran that the God who revealed the Quran and spoke to Muhammad is the one true God, Allah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so it's not surprising to find in the Quran that Jesus, who's mentioned quite often, is said to be a follower of the one true God, and that his disciples were Muslims, not Christians. Right? In fact, the Quran says that the term Muslim was first given to Abraham long before Muhammad started using that term in the 7th century. I'm going to ask my brother to look at some Quranic passages. These are things I did not write down, so turn to chapter 22, verse 78. So from the Muslim perspective, all the prophets, Adam, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses and the Lord Jesus Christ were Muslims who submitted to the one true God, Allah, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Ishmael, the God of Jacob. In chapter 22, verse 78 of the Quran, what does it say? It is he who has made for you facilities of hearing, sight, feeling, and understanding you. Yet it is I that gave you birth, that, that you give little thanks. Are you sure in 22, 78? Oh, 23, sorry. Yes, sir, I know you're nervous. Join the club, but by the grace of God, we're okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone tell you how good looking you are? <laughs> 22, 78. Okay. And you strive in his cause like you should strive. You strive in his cause as you should strive. Go ahead. And strive in his cause like you should strive, with devotion and dedication. He has chosen you. He has made no hardships for you in your religion. It is the religion of your father, Abraham. It is he who has named you Muslims, both before and in this revelation, the Quran. Note that he has named you Muslims, both, both before and in this Quran, because it is the religion of Abraham. So according to the Quran, the religion of Abraham is in Judaism. The religion of Abraham isn't Christianity. The religion of Abraham is Islam because he submitted to the one God. So Muslims are taught all the prophets were Muslims who submitted to the one true God. Now what about the Lord Jesus Christ? Turn to chapter 3 of the Quran. I want you to read verse 52. 52 to 53. Chapter 3, verses 52 to 53. What does it say about the disciples of Christ? Were they Christians or were they Muslims who believed in the one God Allah and believed that Jesus was a mighty messenger and the Messiah? No more, no less. Let's see what the Quran says. In chapter 3, verses 52 to 53. Bear with us as we try to turn to the pages and read these passages. Because it's important that these passages are read in your hearing. It's going to be hard to do both, right? The mic everything? When Isa, Jesus, found disbelief on their part, he said, Who will be my helper, helpers to the work of Allah? The, the disciples said, We are Allah's helpers. We believe in Allah. And do you bear witness that we are Muslims? Bear witness, Jesus, we are Muslims, not Christians. Did you catch that? Here the disciples such as Peter and John and James are bearing witness and asking Jesus to bear witness on their behalf before God that we are Muslims, we follow the religion of Islam. Now go to chapter 5 of the Quran, verse 111. And by the way, uh, although I'm using the term chapter, the Arabic term for a chapter would be surah. But since I'm speaking predominantly to a large uh, American audience, I'll use chapter and verse as opposed to saying surah and ayah. Chapter 5, verse 111, what does it say about the followers of Christ again? 
And look, I inspired the disciples to have faith in me and my messenger. They said, we have faith in you and do also um, your, bear your witness that we bow to Allah and Muslims. We bow to Allah as Muslims.